And this is my review for Star Trek Discovery Season 4, Episode 12, Species 10C. The standard spoiler warning applies if you have not seen this episode. Blah, 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 yada, yada, spoiler warning. Okay, now, into the episode itself. So, this was fantastic. This is the episode I've been waiting for. Uh, took maybe longer than it should have to get here, but that's not the fault of this episode. Uh, this episode uh, did a very effective job of introducing Species 10C, and Species 10C was as unique as I was hoping they would be. I didn't want any of the same old, same old. I didn't want any mustache trolley villain behind it all. Uh, and the way that they um, were trying to learn how to communicate with Species 10C was top-notch. I'll get into that as I get into more of the details of the episode. This was also a very effective penultimate episode as it does an excellent job of setting up for the finale, setting the stakes in place for the finale, uh, ending on somewhat of a tense moment on a great cliffhanger, and really getting us pumped for that finale. Now they only have one episode left to stick this landing, and I'm feeling like they're going to do it. <laughs> I feel like that they definitely can do it. I think uh, in retrospect, no matter how good the season or finale ends up being, that uh, the season itself is going to be hurt by the fact that this should have been 10 episodes instead of 13. And uh, the previous four episodes prior to this one should have been condensed into two. And that did hurt the season overall. But I still think this could end up being the best season of Discovery if they can follow up this fantastic episode with a fantastic ending. And I'm, I'm feeling like they're going to do it. Okay, so let me go ahead and get into uh, some of the details of this week's episode. Okay, let me start with uh, the A plot, uh, which is our characters trying desperately to find a way to communicate with species 10C, and they start with those uh, emotion gases that they found, or whatever you want to call those things. Uh, there were 16 different emotions that they identified, and I'm going to say it was a good thing they went down to that planet. I heard some people complaining, oh, well, they, why they waste time going down to that planet? Well, it's a good thing they did, <laughs> because it ended up being crucial. Uh, so... They're starting there. Um, they send out those, uh, I think they're called dots, those little, those little uh, robots that go in and send in the, the peaceful emotion dust uh, to indicate that they've come in peace. The dots get sucked into the hyper bubble um, and then uh, Discovery gets sucked in as well. And this is where I was a little confused, like they were trying desperately to get out of it and Burnham was like, red alert, red alert, get us out of here no matter what you do. And like, isn't this kind of what you want? Didn't you want to go meet Species 10C? It seems like this would be the way to Species 10C. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't get that. That seemed obvious to me, but <laughs> they seemed desperate to break out of it for some reason, um, but they didn't. So uh, they end up, uh, going in and getting closer to Species 10C. And uh, Species 10C, the way that they looked, it was it was difficult to make them out. I kind of saw them as a sort of a dragon, sort of, but maybe I'm just thinking of the fact that those big bones that they found on that planet the previous uh, episode were kind of dragon-like or serpent-like. Um, so... Uh, maybe that's why I was thinking it, but that's what they kind of reminded me of, but it was kind of ambiguous, and I kind of love that. <laughs> uh, I kind of love that it isn't just some bumpity head <laughs> aliens. I believe it was my brother who said last week that if they just uh, end up being some bumpity head <laughs> aliens, it's going to suck, and uh, they're not. Uh, so 
um, I, I thought that that was very cool. Um, and now as they start to try to communicate uh, with species 10C, uh, they realize that they are being communicated simple math equations, and then they start combining in those emotions, which I love. I love this way of communicating. Because um, if you break down all communications to its basic core, you might be able to break it down to a math equation with emotions. <laughs> so I absolutely love this. Uh, now I have heard comparisons uh, with this to Darmok, uh, which I think is a fair comparison, but I would say this is better than Darmok. I personally have always thought Darmok was a bit overrated because I like what they were going for in Darmok, but I just could never really buy that there would be a species that would have a language that spoke in stories. I mean, I think that's a great idea. I just don't think that's very practical. <laughs> like, what if, what if they just wanted somebody to pass the salt? Uh, is there a story about some <laughs> Darmok passing the salt? I mean, I don't know. I just thought it wasn't a very practical language. So I've never thought that that episode was quite as great as other people do, but I, I do appreciate what they were going for in that episode. So I think this episode kind of takes a similar concept with a unique form of communication and does it better. What this episode actually reminded me of um, was a movie that I at first could not remember. What was the name of that movie? I had to go uh, Google it. Um, Arrival. I think it's that movie Arrival where they had a linguist who was uh, trying to find a way to communicate with the uh, alien species because they had all those ships around the earth. That's what it reminded me of. And I like that. I absolutely fucking love this. Um, and I love this concept of mathematical equations combined with emotions. Uh, and then it got to the point where I figured it out before the characters did. Like when they showed the isotonic bomb and then the DMA, isotonic bomb plus DMA plus curiosity. And they're like, oh, I wonder what this means. Obviously, they're asking why you sent the bomb into the DMA. I thought it was pretty obvious. It took them a little, a little, but I think that's brilliant. That's freaking brilliant. Um, and there were, there were a lot of, you know, just kind of first contact alien movie vibes. I feel like con the movie Contact, a lot of those kind of vibes too. And I can't remember what movie it was, but when uh, Species 10C like gave them that little bubble ship and the door opened up. That kind of rem that reminded me of something. Some one of those movies I've seen before. I don't know. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. I don't even remember what movie it was. All those movies kind of mixed together in my brain. <laughs> those like first contact alien movies. Um, um, but it was it was really freaking cool. Um, and uh, I really love that uh, new character, and I cannot remember his name for the life of me. Uh, but that. Uh, scientist dude the asian dude um i really like this character and he's already more fleshed out than all those like nelsons and <laughs> reese and all of those people uh there was a scene a couple episodes ago with relic telling him to be a little less blunt um but uh thank god they brought him along because like he figured this shit out like i really like this character i really like this character a lot um so uh, then they end up sending in um, Burnham and Saru and Rillick and the Vulcan president uh, all going in and they're, they're, they're really making progress. Uh, but then of course, uh, Targa fucks it all up, which I'll talk about uh, in just a minute here. Um, but yeah, I, I, I loved I love the storyline, and I even enjoyed the uh, Burnham and Saru screaming thing. I thought, I, I can already see people getting complained about that, but I, I thought that was a nice scene. Um, what I'm going to say, though, is uh, when Saru, I forget his exact line to Burnham, but what I heard in my head when he said that line was, I have been and always shall be your friend. <laughs> it wasn't that exactly, but it was something like that. I was like, Saru? Is Saru gonna die? I still maintain 
that in order for Burnham to have true character growth, she's going to have to let somebody die. She's not been able to do that. She wasn't able to do it in season two. Uh, that was Rick's big criticism of her at the beginning of this season is that she cannot make the sacrifice. They're going to have to follow through with that, and she's going to have to sacrifice someone. So I was thinking, oh, that sounds an awful lot <laughs> like I have been and always shall be your friend. Maybe it'll be Saru. However, the ending... Uh, scene really makes it seem like it's going to be uh, Book and Jet Reno, uh, or maybe just Book. Uh, so we have to wait and find out. So let me go ahead and get into that uh, that B plot with Book and Tarka because you needed this plot uh, in this season because otherwise, if it's just Oh, let's go to talk to Species 10 and see. Oh, it turns out they're not that bad. And uh, yeah, everything's hunky-dory. And... All right. So problem solved. There's no tension. So uh, the Book and Tarka storyline is what creates the tension. And I thought it was very effective, if not predictable. I mean, <laughs> I have been pointing out before that I think people kept overlooking Tarka. But in this episode, uh, it occurred to me that in Book's case, I think he's just very trusting. Uh, like some of the things he was telling Jet Reno, he just is too trusting. And that that makes sense. I, I can buy that. I can buy why he wouldn't believe that Tarka would lie about this. That Tarka really doesn't care about other people's lives. He only cares about his own obsession. And, and I can buy that book would be too trusting to uh, to not see that. Now, as for Tarka, I will emphasize again that I love that he's the main antagonist of the season and not Mustache Twirly Osira. Even though it does turn out that his agenda is a little more evil uh, than uh, we first thought it was, as he does not care about anyone else's lives. He's still a far more interesting villain uh, or antagonist. I wouldn't even say villain still. I would say antagonist uh, more than uh, any other villain that they've had uh, on a Discovery. You know, oftentimes a character will have one line that I can point to and say that that defines the character and or at least sheds a lot of light on that character. And I would say that that line for Tarka was in this episode, uh, after he, you know, threw Book through the glass and kicked his ass and uh, locked him up with Reno, he said that, he said to Book that uh, he's only had two friends in his life and Book was one of them. You know what that tells me? Tarka has led a really sad life because would you say that Book and Tarka are friends? Do you think Book thought of Tarka as a friend even before he betrayed him? I don't know. I think he just probably thought of him as more of a uh, like a business partner. Like they have these mutual aims, so they're working together. Uh, I don't know that Book would have thought of Tarka as a friend, and he definitely wouldn't think of him as a friend after he betrayed him. So the fact that Tarka says that Book is the only other friend he's had, presumably other than that, uh, alien dude that he's trying to get back to, the one from the other episode we had the flashback of a couple weeks ago. Um, that's a very, very sad life. That tells me that Tarka has not had any real connections with other humanoids ever in his life. If he considers Book a friend, that that's sad. And that also goes a long way to explain why he is so obsessed with getting back to the one friend that he has. Human connection is important. Emotional connections with other humans, or in this case, humanoids, other beings, is extremely, extremely important. And Tarka was very clearly lacking that through his whole life, and that explains his motivations. Uh, and it makes me a little bit sad for him. Uh, so much better antagonist <laughs> than we got last year. And I'm going to keep saying that over and over again. Um, I also loved how they uh, uh, folded in Jet Reno into all of this. She had been missing for most of the season and it's so great to have her 
here. I thought we might get a little bit more humor with her, but I think she instead surprised me and gave us some of the more emotional scenes. Uh, so here in this episode, when Reno tells Book about uh, the story about how she kept the young guy alive for longer than she, she needed to, like he's, he begged her to kill him and she kept him alive and then he died 11 days later and she realized that his eyes were just like uh, her wife's, her wife who had passed away. Uh, see, that is a good use of a character's backstory. It's not just randomly espousing something that happened in your childhood that has nothing to do with anything and it does not fit into the situation. This actually did fit into the situation and had a very powerful lesson for a book, which he unfortunately did not take in fast enough. Um, but I just love how she kept asking for licorice and even she was just sitting there chewing on it. And um, she's so great. I freaking love her. Although I do worry about her life. Uh, so her message to Burnham in the end is... You must do whatever it takes to stop us. So she didn't just say stop Tarka. She means stop this ship. Stop all of us. Whatever it takes, which implies you may have to destroy this ship. You have to do it. So here we are setting up for what I thought we might be setting up for is Burnham having to make a tough choice. So oh, I'm just really pumped about this. I'm really really pumped about the finale uh even though Tarka's behavior was predictable I do think that it was very effective at causing tension um oh I also want to mention uh the whole thing about Jet Reno and how nobody noticed she was missing for a while I was just like how do they not notice she's not there and then they had it I think they had a good explanation for it that uh Tarka was able to disguise her life or fool Zora into thinking her life signs were still on engineering. And you know what? Everybody's running around. They're busy. They're doing their own things. Um, I could buy that they wouldn't notice that she wasn't actually physically there. I think the one nitpick that I have <laughs> is that when Culver's like, oh, she's an engineering guy, let me go. I'll walk down there slowly to go <laughs> see her in a world where they have these little things that they could just go and transport instantly anywhere. Culver decides to take a little stroll <laughs> because you had to have enough time for them not to find out Reno was uh, missing until it was too late. Uh, but that's just a very, very minor nitpick. So overall, I really, really like this episode. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this review and give you my rating out of 10. So 1 would be the lowest possible score, 10 would be the highest possible score, and out of 10, I'm going to give this one a 9. I'm hesitant to give it a 10 because I don't know what next week's is going to look like. <laughs> so, so I can retroactively raise the score uh, if I want to, but I'm, I'm going to give it a 9. Um, if I'm going to retroactively do scores, I would probably lower <laughs> episode 8's score a little bit after seeing uh, 8, 9, and 10, and 11 together. Uh, so I may retroactively raise this to a 10 if, if next week really sticks the landing. But for now, I'm giving it a tentative 9. But I thought it was a fantastic penultimate episode, which I really, really enjoyed. It really makes me hopeful and excited for next week. Okay, so that does it for my review for Star Trek Discovery Season 4, Episode 12. Please join me on this channel tomorrow as I review a Star Trek Picard Season 2, Episode 2. And then join me next week for the Discovery Season finale as I will talk about that. And I will talk about Star Trek Picard Season 2, Episode 3 next week. Please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that like button. And don't forget to check out my Star Trek 3, the Search for Spock review, which will be up on my channel very shortly. Thank you all so much. I will see you soon. Goodbye.